going to go live here very soon. All right, it looks like we got this thing going. All right, all right. Um, let's see. Just in time for my six-year-old to uh, try to bang down the door. <laughs> all right. Da, da, da. Hey, Marielle. Lauren. <laughs> Thanks for all the, uh, the love you guys. It's really awesome. Let's see. We're gonna wait for Miss Lily Coles to, uh, to join in. Let's see. Ta -ta -ta. Hello, France. Hello, Emily. Jesse. Hmm. Let's see. This is my uh, my first time hosting an Instagram live, so uh, let's uh, let's see what we got here. There we go. I think I found her. <gasps> hey, what was that? Your first time? What? <laughs> go go easy on me, please. <laughs> <laughs> is this your first Instagram live? Um, the first time that I've hosted it. So it's, uh, it's brand new. I'm trying to like press all these buttons and calling the neighbors. The pressure's all on you. I don't do anything. <laughs> I just sit back and I just sit here and I drink my kombucha in peace. Nice. Well done. Where, where are you? I'm in my home right now. I moved back to this old house that I grew up in and my father grew up in. It was built in 1787. So it's like the ceilings are wow. six foot. I have to yeah. duck between yeah, the doors yeah. and, and it's all warped and full of ghosts and squirrels. And there was a giant squirrels. black bear and three little bear cubs that walked across the road just like three hours ago. So oh, we're, in the, we're in country living. Yeah, you're, you're out there. You're out there. Well, How are you nice. doing? You're, you're on the other side of the continent, right? Yeah, yeah. We're in Los Angeles. Um, they, uh, they just opened up the parks uh, like Friday, right, which was right. which kind of allowed people to go outside. You know, we have a, a six year old, so he's uh, bouncing off the walls with uh, with energy. So that's that's kind of been our life. I have so much respect for parents who have gone through this quarantine. My sister has three kids under the age of seven, three boys I under mean, the age of seven. Boys, She's like, send help. I get like Morse code being like, send yeah. help. What did I do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> help, help me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly but i think she's happy about it yeah yeah so so tell me what have you been doing with your time then have you been outside a lot have you been outside a lot yes i've been slowing way down maybe i can give you a um a view from outside my yeah. home so right <laughs> across there there's a bunch of land and i've been um i've been starting a little farm i just decided that i was gonna start farming um, so we just opened up a big plot of earth out there. My uh, boyfriend used to farm for four years, so he like knows the drill. So yeah. I've been like getting down and dirty. We just had a, a huge pile of, I'm sorry to swear right now, but cow shit delivered mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the house. And I just was grinding that in. So I've been living kind of a farmer's life and I've been in the writer's room for Roswell, which has been really fun and cool. Oh, amazing. And anyone Someone who's like, watching, man, we are talking about some crazy stuff with uh -huh. season three. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, it's really exciting. It's cool to be a part of that and see that side of it. Did you ever go in on the original? Were you ever like in the you know, mix? Um, Jason Kadams, our, our illustrious leader there, he was very, mm -hmm. very apprehensive about having actors go into the white writer's room. I think right. He thought we were all going to give him our, um, our best two cents, which would be like his worst two cents. Um, right. But but um, but he he did eventually let me come in there, and it's it's such a trip, like to see that because whenever yeah. we'd walk by the office, he would always like go up and like you know cover the right. Room. Don't there's look. There's nothing to see here. There's nothing to see here. You know. Um, You're not dying this season, I swear. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But can I talk Who's to you? Who's I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> um. But, uh, but yeah, so, so I did finally go in there and, and uh, it's, a, it's a trip. It's a real eye opener for like how they, you know, how they, they think so far in advance and then are also very um, adept to taking in like fan response and like, well, this is working really well and this kind of isn't. 
Yeah, it's crazy how that can happen. I've heard so many stories of people who start out as a little guest role and then wind up becoming like big main characters just because of how, you know, the people who are watching right now and who are tuned in, like, it's so much, you know, the the reaction that they have and the response that they have, it definitely dictates where things go, I think, yeah. because people, you know, you want to you wanna keep the fans happy. Yeah, give them, I mean, give them what they want. Aaron Paul was supposed to be killed off in Breaking Bad, like, you know. Right. Very early on. That just, imagine. Can you imagine what the show would be like? Boring. Let's just sit and contemplate that for, for My God. Yeah. It would be so clean. He would have just gone back <laughs> to teaching. It would have been like breaking yeah. fine. Breaking a good yeah, he's good now. We never um, would have reached Ozzy Mandius. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It is, though, it is funny being an actor in it because there are definitely moments when they'll talk about Isabel where I'm like, I really have to try to not get, I'm like, yeah. you know what could be a fun thing for Isabel also is um, tigers, if she had tigers <laughs> or, um, you know, I would say superpowers, <laughs> but my God, she already does. So that's cool. But that's fun. Do you, did, did you, were you able to give any kind of um, input at all or, or try to kind of like, you know, push the needle in a certain direction? You know, there is something that they've been very generous on. There's on Fridays, they have like crazy pitch Friday. So um, mm -hmm. every once in a while, I feel like I, in general, I try to respect it because I'm like, these people are professionals and I come in here like trying not to just, you know, put my opinions in where they're like, that makes no sense. They're playing like a whole other level of a game there. I mean, it's amazing to me because writers are able to interweave so many different plot lines and be making these meaningful connections across a season and drawing things back. So yeah, it's like weaving something. Yeah. And I'm just like sitting here with a ball of string being like, I like this color. And they're like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> but <laughs> I did give a couple of pitches on Crazy Pitch Fridays. I'd be like, um, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and give a crazy pitch here. I can't reveal what they are because I feel that it might compromise what season three has to do with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's definitely gonna be juicy and it's fun. Yeah, Cause but really, I'd love to, to do some more like that, yeah. Would you, would you want to write your own script? Is that I think that'd be that, great. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I've often been asked if people would, if I would want to direct and I'm like, mm -hmm. I think I'd want to write more than direct. Yeah. Did you, have you directed anything? Did you ever direct any of the episodes? I, I can't remember. I never, I never got, I never got on uh, to directing that, but it's something that I've always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I was going to be directing the next season had we been going for four. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but like writing is something I think every actor should do, at least to try to like get their, you know, their minds and mm -hmm. their hearts and their hands into it, just to kind of like experience that. Cause it's, it's yeah. not easy. No, it's so difficult. And um, I, I'm a big collaborator. So I love when I get to work with people, but I have so much respect for writers who go and they sit by themselves and they're off just creating a whole universe. In a vacuum. You know, but in a vacuum. Yeah. That's, I'm like, how could you even begin? Like it yeah. doesn't even, cannot compute. Cause I'm such a, I really like to bounce off other people. I think that's what, but, but being in the writer's room, it's been really fun to see all of that happening. And you watch it, it's like a tennis match between 12 people and you're like, bam. Yeah, yeah. You guys are good. So, so Karina had told me a little uh, bit that you kind of like the books, the original books. Yeah, I'm a, I am a science fiction nerd. I liked the books, I loved the show. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, I. I don't know if you remember the first time that we met and it's a story that I've told since because everyone always asks me like, what's it like bringing up Jason? I'm like, I had a really embarrassing moment. Give me one. Yeah, it was a terrible thing. Hold on, just give me one second. I'm being summoned. The leash, the dog leash is missing. I think it's in the truck across the street. Next to Solving the problems. I'm exactly, it's multitasking here. Um, but we were on set and it was a late night and there was something that I, I also feel like I can't talk about because I don't know if and when this part's going to happen, I, but there I, was something striking about you yeah. <laughs> that was going on. <laughs> I hadn't met you yet and I was, was like so excited that you were going to be on it because I was like, I, I was just, a, yeah, an enormous fan, but I made such a jerk. I was such a jerk. I was, I was embarrassed, I was so embarrassed myself. And I'm not like a person who gets particularly starstruck or anything, but I like dropped, I was like, oh, I was like, oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, oh my God. <laughs> you were just standing there like you'd clearly had to deal with this so many times before you're like, yes, it's all right, it's me. Yes, I know, it's fine, you're gonna be fine. It's like stuffing my pockets with beans and stuff like, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna see you later. <laughs> <laughs> went home and I was like oh god but yes I was a big fan the books were a trip I mean and they went into some 
they've got into some weird stuff that I'm yeah. always wondering if we're going to wind up pulling out. Did you read any of those? Or did you I do did. anything like that? For, you did. I, I did. I did. It, you know, it's been a few years since I've done that. I remember, you know, but they did, they kind of went off in a kind of a trippy way. And mm -hmm. I was curious, especially like, you know, season three, how that's going to look for everyone going forward with the world that we live in now. Like, you know, um, how do you adjust that? Or do do ideas like that actually have a place in, in, uh, in season four of Roswell and Mexico? I know. I think they do. Seasons, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and maybe season four too. Who knows? Um, <laughs> our writers are so contemporary. And one thing that I do love about this um this group of writers is that they really want to bring in so many topical issues and really address the things. So they're definitely talking about what it looks like, the, you know, the world that we're going to be coming back into and if, yeah. and how that ties into the story. Cause certainly, I mean, what I love about science fiction is that you can like, there are no rules. You yeah. can just do whatever. So Endless possibilities. Yeah. So I'm like, wait, I'm interested to see how that will all pan out. Are you a science fiction fan? Like, were you, did you like that kind of world before you got, before you were thrust into it? Or I, I did. I actually, I mean, you know, E.T. was one of the first films that I ever saw. And of course, I'm right. a Star Wars fan. Um, but there, but, Is that uh, where the iconic... You're saying, I feel like it's a very, it's a very it was, moment. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was written in a way that, um, that uh, Jason had had, you know, Max referencing like where it was and she didn't really quite get it and say up north Canada or whatever. I love and, it. And, and, and so, uh, you know, we did that. And um, I don't know that that was one of those days where we were, we were on set, we were in that music hall kind of like most of the day because there's some other stuff that they had with uh, with Colin and uh, and other stuff with Nick and uh, Bill Sadler but um, we were there for a good part of the day and the lighting was so exquisite with that I was I was so like when you're in it and this is like this is the pilot you know and you're you I'd worked before but I really wasn't paying attention to lighting or anything like that so right to to have all that work out sort of like in this magical way was really special I just remember the original. I mean, you guys had the most atmospheric. There was something so beautiful about the way that that series was shot. The, I mean, it, yeah, there was this environment that was created. First of yeah. all, that so captured that kind of time too. Yeah. When I think about that era, it's like the perfect aesthetic. But there was something. I remember being like, it was some, it, it affected me deeply. It was like haunting. It had a weight in it that I remember get like got behind my rib cage somewhere where I'd watch the show and there was something, um, yeah, haunting and just weighty about whatever. Yeah. I it, maybe it was partly, part, partially the cinematography and the way it was directed, but, but also you guys, the cast. And yeah, I just, I think that that show, and I wonder, did you have a sense when you were making it that it would have such a kind of, impact on people did you were you like we're making something really amazing or after the fact did you watch it and you were like damn i don't know, I don't well, know. <laughs> thank you very much for the, for the very kind words i mean it i think you know one of the things that we went in there with was um when i had my first meeting with jason kadams and with david nutter you know it, when i first got the the um the script it was called roswell high um, right and and so i was actually doing dawson's creek at the time oh my god and they had wanted me to continue on to be, you know, like a, a series regular on that show. And right. I got the script for Roswell High. And I was like, well, this is, if this is done well, this is pretty amazing. Because yeah. all the stuff that you guys do and you know, all the stuff that, that we did, it's just, you know, there's so much, there's so much to uh, excavate there and so much to play with. Mm -hmm. um, if you play the science fiction for real and it just happens to be a part of your life, like the stakes are that high. Yeah. And, and um, as you guys do beautifully. Um, but, but uh, you know, Jason was like, you have to, this has to mean something to you. This has to be, this has to be real. And um, so did we have a sense that it was going to be something special? I think we had an idea. Um, right. But, you know, but, um, but David did a, a, a masterful job at directing. He, he's, he's okay, that guy. Um, right. <laughs> and then, um, and then Jason is, is, you know, one of the best writers out there. And, uh, and then, then, then uh, um, Dave Bartley, um, or John, sorry, John Bartley, who was the cinematographer, mm -hmm. who, who, you know, I still talk to to this day, right. who was like, he took a while to set up, you know, shots, but it was so mm -hmm. worth it. So everything yeah. sort of kind of came together and and, uh, and worked. Yeah. 
Um, I was talking to Kevin Brown, who was one of our Kevin producers, <laughs> and he was telling me we we got stranded at an airport together on the way to upfront from the first year. We missed a flight. It was where we were just like stuck in Cincinnati or something together for like five hours. It was like five hours with Kevin Brown. It could have been right. a mini series. Amazing. amazing. <laughs> yeah. It was great, but he was telling me all about the original and just, yeah, the process of getting that together. And he was saying that it was just kind of alchemical, the way all of these things came together and, yeah, yeah gelled. And you so often you, so, I mean, there's so many pilots that are made. There are so few that then get picked up. And then out of that, the ones that really stick and have a lasting impression. But it's, um, yeah, it must have been incredible to be part of something that wound yeah. up having such a big impact in that way um yeah. but going back to your involvement in science fiction because i'm actually interested you had watched et was mm -hmm. it something that you did you like the sci-fi world or yeah i i did i mean i i was you know we i i um uh we went camping a lot when mm -hmm. i was a kid my parents were, were hippies and so we moved around a lot so whenever we had a chance to sleep out behind the stars we would and um so there was be times where we'd you know all four boys and the parents would be just, you know, staring up the stars and trying to call shooting stars and like just thinking about what's, you know, what might be out there. Um, and of course, you know, I thought it was like, I thought it was Luke Skywalker and Han Solo. And, right. You know, so. <laughs> they can't, de can't decide. I'll be both. Yeah, I'll be both. <laughs> I was Chewy in Jabba the Hutt myself. That's <laughs> kind of where I'm at. <laughs> I highly doubt that. Um, so, so, um, so what else, what else, what else? So, in season three, you guys are you guys are in the mix of, of, of kind of putting stuff out there right now and kind of spitballing a little bit as it were. Yeah, it's definitely it's interesting because yeah, right now the writers are are working away at it, hacking away at it, and it's it's amazing to watch again the process. So some some of the writers are off right now breaking the first two episodes, yeah. um, but we're starting to see the uh, the story arc come together, and it's it's going to be really powerful. And I can't um, wait. Yeah, Karina does a great job at the helm of it. She's definitely got a, she's a powerful woman. And it's, it's cool to work for, a, I'm like, I'm as, I think we're about the same age. And I'm like, wow, you're doing, you're like killing it, girl. You're doing yeah. really good. You're yeah. show running right now. She um, is, she is killing it right now. Yeah. And much well, deservedly so. What's that? And much deservedly so. Like she, she yeah. works hard for it. Oh man, she works so hard. I know she works so hard. And then she's also just a great friend and like loves to get people together and just celebrate so she's also such a yeah an, an incredible person to have in your arsenal if you need if you need a favor you know you ask karina yeah, yeah. she's gonna make it happen um well i just wanted to recall really briefly because my favorite memory of working on set with you this time was when we all went out to karaoke together <laughs> yes i had just bought a floor length fur vest Mm -hmm. And um, I lent it to you to go on stage to sing with Michael Vlamis, I think. Yep. It was a... I can't remember what you were singing. Do you remember? I, really I was more of a hype man. I wasn't really, I mean, you I were... kind of got in there a little bit, but I was more of a hype man. I was really trying to make well, Vlamis like, look really good. Nothing screams hype man like a floor length fur vest. Nothing. So, was... <laughs> Which is why you're very lucky you, you, you actually found that back in your possession. <laughs> <laughs> It's, I've joked that I haven't touched it since. It's in a museum now. It's like, it's my hype man uh, for, for vest. It's, you know, it's, it can only come out for very special occasions. Yes. And honestly, I don't know where I'll wear it ever again. I'm like, I bought that and I'm like, what was it? I wonder what I was thinking when I bought a it's faux fur for anyone out there who's like angry and trying to spray catch up on their phone. Don't do it. It's not worth it. It's fake. But that was an incredible time and it, it was so cool having you join us there i know that all of us probably tried to like play it cool but we were like so excited to have you there and um just to be able to be part of that legacy and to have you you and shiri come back and and be part of the project for us is like the coolest thing and it lent i think it makes us all feel really excited and just good and so thank you for being so like supportive of our of the reboot because it can be t you know contentious well for me thank you very much for saying that and it was also very full circle for for us and it felt very special for us to have you know three years of our lives and 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 20 years ago 
um, this is something that that really had such an impact uh, for us, I think, personally and you know, creatively. To be able to come back to that world and to play in a different yeah. way is really special. It's very full circle, and I don't, I don't know that happening too often. I was I was talking about that with, um, um, I think with Karina about that. You know, like someone revisiting a character like that. I mean, Paul Newman did it with with um, the Hustler and with Color of Money. But like, right. it's pretty rare that someone gets to come back and even just play in the world, let alone play another character. So, yeah, I know it's it's really cool the trip. I mean, it is a beautiful thing to be able to to come back around and and great having Shiri direct too. I mean, she's yeah. amazing and it's so fun to see her working with Janine and the two Liz's. And you know when they start wrestling too, and they're like, "I'm Liz, no, I'm Liz," and you have to break them up because you're like, "Ladies, ladies, it's okay," but no. <laughs> It's fine. Let's all just go to karaoke. It's fine. Let's sing, mm -hmm. sing it out. Um, no, it's really cool. I mean, it's definitely the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. So I'm really happy to be part of it. And um, long may Roswell long may continue Roswell. in this universe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I love what you've been doing on the show. And, and uh, I, I can't wait to see what you do next year. And uh, thank you so much. Maybe we'll see a script with your name on it. Hey, that would be cool. Yeah. I'll have you direct it. Hands down. Hey, okay. Only if I get That's to wear good. the vest. Only if I get to wear, wear the, the vest. vest. It's Every the day. man director's vest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the man with the fur vest. <laughs> yeah, Cut. you can't not. Absolutely. Thank you so right, much for like... having me. This has been so thank fun. You. Thank you for Have coming Have a wonderful board. rest of the time. And everybody who tuned in, thank you too. It's really cool to see all these comments. I'm like, I try not to get lost. I'm like, I know, I, I'm trying I'm trying to like pay attention too, but yeah. Um, I think Karina's gonna be coming up next. So we'll we'll talk more about that. Enjoy. Right. Tell Thank her I so say much. hello. Send her my regards, please. I will. <laughs> right. Take care. Bye. You too. Bye bye. All right, let's see if I get off of this thing. Mm -hmm. Let's save it. Make sure I can save it. Oh, it's still live. We're still live. We're still live. Give me one moment, guys. Just uh da -da 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 -da. Let's see. I think Karina has been here with us for the whole time, or for a little bit of time, I guess. Um, let's see. Let's see here. Mel Mac, hello. Um, hmm. This is kind of a trip for me because I'm not really quite sure how to do any of this stuff. I'm just going to talk to myself. Let's see here. Maybe. How do I get off this thing? Just... Still looking for Miss Karina if she's coming on board. Katie is fine. Thank you for asking, Kiana. Oh, there we go. Da, da, da. <laughs> Thanks, Karina. You want to come on in? Let's see. Let's see. I think I got it now. There she is. I'm early. <laughs> I saw How you were done you? with Lily, and I figured I'd take up some more of your time. <laughs> hey, anytime you ask. Anytime Hi. you ask. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm like in a weird corner of my. Oop. There goes the phone. I'm in a weird corner of my bedroom in Santa Fe right now because it's oh, like one of those like full on New Mexico thunderstorms is happening, mm -hmm. and the my room is the only room in the house that doesn't have like a skylight. So it's the only room that's not super loud right now. Yeah. With like yeah. rain pouring down on the on the um on the roof. But There's I love the song in there somewhere. Next, so I'm so happy. Yeah, I bet. I, it's one of the most beautiful pieces of land and world that I've been to. The sky yeah. is just amazing. Yeah. You look good. Where'd the beard go? Uh you know what? I just had to let it go. Let it walk away. <laughs> let it roll. Was it you or was it Katie? <laughs> <laughs> A little bit of both, I suppose. It's hot here. It's really hot here in, in Los Angeles. And um, yeah. I, my son was like, no, you must keep it. You must keep it. And I'm like, 
it's time to let it walk away. Yeah, the little bit extra go. layer of fur was, it was no longer necessary. A little bit much, yeah. I, um, I, I've been in LA this whole time and I like this weekend just kind of was like, all right, I gotta go pack up my stuff in New Mexico. Yeah. Um, and, and made it like, it was pouring, there was thunderstorm in the drive last night and it was like one of those beautiful ones with like lightning like slices across the sky yeah. and felt like I could finally breathe again. Mm, you're making me a little homesick for, for some New Mexico. Well, come hang out. Just stay eight feet away from me, but. <laughs> <laughs> Deal. Oh, Deal. man. How's the, how's the lives going? I'm looking at all these, these texts or these it, comments. So great. It's, it's, um, it's kind That's of nice. difficult to really pay attention to like what, like what Lily was saying and then like read some of the stuff. The I only know. time I got a chance to really look at it was when I was, um, yes, wearing a mask with a beard is tough. Uh, yeah. um, but uh, but the only time I got a chance to look at it was when I was trying to like figure out either how to end it and save it and then have you come on or just get you to come on board. So I was just yeah. like, pressing buttons. I was like this, you know. Yeah, I think you can save it afterward. That's the, the key is to save it afterward, but it's it can be very confusing. Sorry, yeah. Pacey's yapping away. He's like, wait, yeah. is somebody having fun in there? No. You, you do realize <laughs> I'm I'm hiding in my office right now, and Atticus is somewhere out there running around like a madman. <laughs> And if he hears me and knows that I'm in, in this room, he will come <laughs> smashing through that door like the Kool-Aid man. It's like that little kid <laughs> bopping around in the back of her dad's, uh, her dad's uh, uh, like news broadcast. Have you seen that video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah, cutest yeah. thing ever. Um, so, um, yeah. No, he'll, um, he'll, he'll bust through here and start like breaking stuff. <laughs> um, I'm looking at people's questions. See. Let's see. Did you have fun with Lil? I saw a little bit of it. I, I signed on and you guys were saying nice things about me. And then I was like, I feel like I'm, I'm like a, voyeur, like a voyeur listening to them talk about me. <laughs> well, you should have stayed on it. It got dark real fast. Um, Good. Good. That's it. <laughs> um, no, it was, um, she's, she's, she's wonderful. She's amazing. And uh, it's so, I think it's so wonderful that she's in the writer's room to like, you know, kind of observe yeah. and absorb that kind of stuff. Well, she's brilliant. Lily, like, yeah. Lily went to Princeton. Lily is like, we're so lucky to have her. Um, and, and, you know, I, when when we sign actors on to do a TV show like this, as you know, series regulars get signed on for six seasons. And I think, yeah. uh, you know, I don't ever want things to get stale for people. I don't ever want people to feel like they're doing the same thing all the time. So, you know, Lily is is on a track to, to write. Heather's on the track. Heather and Trevino are on the track to direct. Amber has all these other opportunities that are coming out. We always want to make sure that people can do, you know, the other stuff that they love because... Yeah. I don't want, I don't ever want it to feel like people don't want to come to work. So right. as long as I'm keeping people happy. <laughs> right, right. Well, I, she is, she's actually, she's, in, she's incredibly intelligent. And the fact that she's such a, a fan of like the books of the show, uh, you know, to have that sort of like, you know, scope or bend to kind of go, well, what about this and what about that? Yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's it's pretty, pretty awesome. crazy that she's like, like she's a Roswell nerd. Yeah. Her dream, her wildest dream came true. You're welcome, Lily <laughs> Cole. <laughs> Uh, somebody's um, asking if um, if you're in more episodes. Should I tell them which episodes you're in? I, yeah, I did. I did mention I was in more, but I, you can say you know he's which. in tonight's episode a lot, mm -hmm. like a lot, a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And then tomorrow, uh, next week's episode, episode two ten, and then we have a little break. We're, we're taking one. We're taking Memorial Day Monday off. We're not okay. on. And then Jason's in the finale. One of my favorite scenes in the finale. Is, is one of yours. No, thank you. I'm so excited for you to see it. Thank you. It's, it's where I run away, right? It's, it's just the yeah. backside of me. Yeah, he just rides off into the sunset on a stallion. <laughs> <laughs> a white unicorn, right. Yeah. yeah that's no, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. We weren't excited. gonna spoil the unicorn thing. <laughs> Press one of these buttons. Um, um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm very excited to see it too, and thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so what else? You, you've been, Lily was saying you guys are back in the writer's room. And, yeah. You know, I know you and I had, you know, talked about a little In the bit. room. I mean, it's a Zoom. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, in the Zoom. You know. <laughs> um, but like, but what does that look like for you guys going forward with season three? Like, I know it's a, it's a completely new world. That we're well, in. it's a little scary. Um, we have had, you know, a lot of challenges thrown away, sort of, you know, there are um, there are 
are rumors floating around about what production is going to look like after this is all done. And nobody's sure. Nobody knows anything for sure yet. But we do know we're going to definitely be delayed a few months, which is a bummer. Um, and then there's like, we as we're writing, we're having to consider possibilities of things like you can't pack an interior set full of extras anymore. So what do we do with our bar and our diner sets that are, you know, central pieces of our show? Yeah. And, you know, now we can't fill them with people. What do we do with that? Uh, we are probably going to have to, you know, the answer is like, oh, we'll set more scenes outside, except that if we're delaying production, we're going to be shooting way more in the middle of winter. Um, mm -hmm. And then there are other very scary possibilities, like we were asked to consider what might possibly happen if we have to shoot a season with no kissing. How would we do that? <laughs> Which is, uh, you know, my stomach hit the floor, but... You're right. Um, you know, it, whatever challenges that we're facing as a show, all the other TV shows are going to be facing those same challenges. Yes. So, um, and I think that our audience is going to understand why we're doing this. But, um, yeah, so fun. <laughs> That's crazy. It's like blowing a bubble. Like, all right, I figured, out a, I figured out a solution to not having tons of extras inside. Cool. And then they're like, also, Max and Liz can't kiss. And I'm like, not kissing. Super. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Wow. Jeez. This is what we do, though. We put out, we, that's what being a producer is, is putting out fucking fires all day. Yeah, exactly. So. Exactly. <laughs> we were just talking, Lily and I were just talking about Breaking Bad. And, you know, they used to, like, paint themselves into a corner on purpose. Yeah. To, like, okay, how can we create That's what we do at the end of the of season, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the end of season one, it was like, I, I said at the beginning of season one, I was like, and then Rosa comes back to life. And at the end of season one, uh, we, we aired the finale. And the next day they picked us up and my first thought was like, oh shit, I gotta figure out what happens next. <laughs> like, <laughs> and that, I think that we have a similar, a similar uh, conundrum at the end of this season um, that, you know, we had to sort of come to the writer's room and be like, all right, how are we getting out of this one? But it's cool because then we're in the same situation as our characters. Our characters right. are also like, how the fuck do we deal with this? Um, right. And that's the fun of, of setting the sci-fi shit in a world that's really the, our real world that's meant yeah. to be our world. Yeah. That, Lily and I were just talking about that as well. Like, you know, cause she was, she was asking about the original and I was also saying with what you guys do as well, it's like, it, it's, it's all real. It's not played as in like this fantastical science fiction thing. It's yeah. like, this is the world we live in. This stuff exists and that's why it has the high stakes that it has. Yeah, I like to I, I like to think of it as like Friday Night Lights with aliens. We right. do the Friday night, we break the Friday Night Lights story first, and then we're like, and then the alien shit comes right. into it. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh man, it's just so good to see your face. It's really, it's really good to see you too. Uh, yeah. I am um, I I feel like I've been like a ghost, like like putting on makeup in the morning. This morning I was like, okay, there she is. Okay, right. <laughs> right. but I will say it's it's been funny like. In in quarantine, I still like after the, you know at the beginning it was like it was like I'm just, I'm gonna be an adult. So I'm gonna make my bed every day and I'm gonna put on pants every day because I'm working from home and I'm a grown up. But now I'm like, oh, have I changed this shirt in four days? Right, right, right. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's starting to walk away. Maybe yeah, I should. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. But you know, it's funny because I right before this is just like so superficial and dumb but like right before uh christmas i dyed my hair back to my natural color because remember it was like bright 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 bleach mm -hmm. blonde mm -hmm. and i was like i think i'm ready to be more low maintenance thank god because <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm like a stripe right here um but, well i will yeah. say this I, I did read in one of the comments they said you had very beautiful hair so that's nice there you go. that's really nice because i finally washed it yeah. <laughs> Oh, people are asking about the alien shirts. So the alien shirts are all getting printed. They printed out like a, a bunch for the cast and then they're, they printed them all out now. And I think they go out, they get shipped on Wednesday, I believe. Okay. Um, but also we are gonna launch on Monday, we are launching a whole new line of, new line of merch. Awesome, um, awesome. Are interested. We've got some cool hoodies with Rose's graffiti on them. And we've got some Wild Pony branded gear that's um, awesome some like totes and stuff we're we, we've done a really good job raising money for the crew um we're starting to send out checks to people that need them which Fantastic. makes me very happy and Fantastic. helps me sleep at night um 
because yeah, New Mexico is, is just as shut down as everywhere else in the world. So yeah. And it's just, it's such an exceptional crew and such a, an amazing group of people. I think so too. I think they especially like the 1948 team. Yeah. Yeah. Team, team 47, 48 was, that was, yeah. um, we, we had a blast with all of that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's nice when like, cause you guys shot so much outside in like a barn or in the, the, you know, the field. Yeah. And those are usually tough, tough nights. They're long nights. You know, if people are grumpy, one grumpy person can just like poison the whole else, well yeah. for everybody. Yeah. And everybody wasn't, everybody was mm -hmm. so excited to be there. And like, you know, we had to shoot the same scene over and over to reveal different things, different times. We had what, what was, how old is major? Like seven, we had a seven yeah, year old seven, on set, yeah. just killing it. Just yeah. showing everybody how it's done. Yeah. Um, Cass had to lie in the mud for like, God. like all night, this yeah. one night we had Cass yeah. just lying in the mud. Um, yeah. Yeah. And she was a trooper. I kept feeling bad. You know, Cass is one of my best, best friends. Aisha is one of my best, best friends. And I'm like, okay, guys, Kayla's my family. And I was like, cool, guys. So I'm just going to throw you into the trenches. Like, <laughs> while everyone else is sipping milkshakes at the crash down, please lie in this mud at the end of November. And in the 20 degrees. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know that newborn you have back in the trailer, you'll probably see her tomorrow or maybe next couple of days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But that, that's the whole, like, everybody in that whole 47 crew was like, they didn't, nobody, everyone was just so wonderful. And it yeah. was that, 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 that light and that buoyancy that just kept everybody afloat. I loved it. It was really fun. And, and I think that you guys set a good tone. You're, you know, I, I know that the storylines were, were important to you guys. Like, mm -hmm. you didn't just come in to, like, make a cameo and make a splash and, like, get back in the spotlight you wanted to tell a good story so yeah no i think um, i think it, it had a lot of relevance to everybody everybody felt very very um, yeah empowered by it and felt like they, they had to you know pull their weight around in that and I, when i when i see some of the stuff in there it just it feels like a, it feels like from a different era it feels like it's you know very very filmic and very noirish and very it just has a different tone to it the whole thing i don't want to give it too much away but that shot that we did out at sunset for the finale with mm -hmm. the car and all that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's like it's like just being transported it's yeah amazing. It, it, it feels like yeah it feels like a totally different time they're asking will we see flashbacks of the time between 1947 and 2008 should we tell them what we're, where we're going oh my tonight? god oh my god wait no we just haven't seen it we, should... we shouldn't tell them um we've yeah got, we've got a, we've got a little we've got a little uh a little taste of 1987 at the crash down it back to the future is my favorite movie and one of the things that i loved about it was how you saw how one location would evolve over time mm -hmm. um and so tonight we will go to the uh the atomic cafe which is what the crash down was called before the crash in 1947 and then we will see the crash down cafe in 1987 and then we will spend a little time in the crash down cafe in present day What's that beep? Is that me? No. My car can't do that. What's happening? Yeah. I'm hearing beeping. I can't hear you. I'm trying to see what people are saying. Hold on. Beeping, huh? You heard, you heard Karina? Oh, so you, you didn't hear me, you heard Karina. Well then good, I didn't. Just heard beeping too. <laughs> Let's see if I can get Karina back in here. I am not available right now to hear my own voice. Can we hear you now? I can hear you and now the beeping's gone. Right. I don't, I, it was like there was some kind of like other interference coming in. That's so bizarre. It was like, it, it was like out of like a movie. Backing up. Just as you started to say, tonight at the crash town, it just shut off and it was just you without sound talking. It's like, oh no. Oh, weird. Oh, I'm sorry. So, so um, you're all, you're all good now. Well, I, I 
that was the one chance to give away the secrets. So, <laughs> uh, no, tonight, tonight we spend time at the crash down in, in all the different eras. And then we also visit uh, another sort of roadside diner. It, I was inspired by this uh, Ani DeFranco song called The Diner. And I came into the writer's room one day and I was like, I've got this crazy idea for an episode that's told kind of out of order in a weird non-linear way. And every single storyline in one way or another uh, centers around a diner. Um, the idea being that in these little towns that sort of become towns that people pass through on their way to somewhere else, somebody's always stopping at a diner. Um, so it's cool. Awesome. I can't wait to see it tonight. Yeah, it's fun. And I'm so proud about you, Shah. I mean, the, we were just talking the other night about how, like, you know, when you hire your best friend to do something, sometimes people are like, oh, here goes Karina. Like, you know, her, her, her Coachella buddies coming to direct an episode. And so I think that Aisha <laughs> felt like coming in, like she had a little bit to prove, like, no, I deserve to be here. And this, and she did a killer job. We're so proud of her. I mean, she's directed a ton of like short films and, and, um, and episodes of Criminal Mind. But I think this was the first thing that she was like coming in as a guest. Um, and I loved watching her work with actors. There's a yeah. lot of scenes. There's a lot of scenes in this, in this uh, episode that are just, two people talking with no spectacle and no, you know, no crutches to lean on, just two people talking and she yeah. Was done. yeah, she she knocked this one out of the park. She was very, you know, it was just such a collaborative, creative process with her. Very we talked about art, we talked about music, we talked about all sorts of things and somehow all filtered into the cool whole, fuck. whole thing. Yeah. So cool. So do you think where do you think Max, Liz and the others will be by now? Will they be with their parents? I'm I'm wondering if that's like where would they be in quarantine? I think that Liz right now would be on like the COVID task force. She's a biomedical engineer. She's after okay. solving solving this shit. So I think Liz would be Liz would be working on the task force. I think uh, Max would have no. Max doesn't need to lock down. Max can't get sick with human human right. illnesses. So Max is out. Uh, not only doing all the deliveries for the wild pony, but also probably back on the police force because. Uh, you can't get sick. That's the answer to that question. <laughs> Aliens can't get human viruses. So like they're just driving Ubers right now. <laughs> <laughs> Intergalactic Uber. Um, asking you, how did you feel being back on set? I was curious, like what was, were you, cause we didn't reach out to you until season two. Cause we didn't, I mean, I didn't want to reach out to anybody until I had a good part for you guys. But, but were you, did you hesitate at all? Were you like, uh, I don't know. But Not at all. Doctor. You 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 sent out that really wonderful email and kind of like the hard sell. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 gave me such all this information about what was you know what was in it, and it felt so apropos and felt just so right. And uh, no, I didn't, I didn't hesitate for a second, not for a second. And I'm Thanks. so glad I did. You know, yes. I, I I had so much fun, and. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing what people think about tonight's episode and the rest of the stuff. But I, I, um, I had a blast. Too, so. It was wild for me. There was a day, one of your first days that you got here, or maybe the actual first day that you got here, I was driving back from Bonanza Creek to, to our production stages. And I got a text from my assistant that just said, hey, Jason and Sherry are waiting at the picnic tables outside for you. And I was just like, what is my life? How? <laughs> Like, how did I get here? What's happening? And I just wanted to, like, go back in time and, like, knock on 12-year-old Karina's door and be like, guess what's going to happen to you when you grow up? <laughs> That's so cool. Well, Lily's back. Hey, Lily. And we, like, we had really good chats. We, like, we, you and I had some, like, long, deep convos about Trip and, you know, yeah. who he is and what he represents. Yeah. Any yeah. other cameos in the works? Not right now because we don't have – oh, Lily's back. Hi, Lil. Um, not right now because we don't have a production schedule yet, so we can't really reach out to people and say, are you available for this time and that time? Because we don't know what's happening. But um, I, I don't, I tr I'm trying not to do like cameos. I'm trying to, to if we're going to have, you know, people from the original show come in, I want it to be like a meaningful thing, even if it's just one episode. I don't want it to be like, and then there's Sherry Appleby playing the gas station attendant. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? right. right. Um, I want it to, I have so much respect for everybody. I want everybody to be able to sink their teeth into things. Um, but I know Weschler, I think I, I, I think I could convince Weschler to come visit us. 
And then um, Brandon lives nearby, so. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think I think it's a nice myself. I think I think you can make the sale. Wexler, we were talking about this earlier. He is he's one of the funniest people that I know. He is yeah. hilarious, and he also um, no pressure, Nick. Um, and he's like a little there. bit. He's a little bit handsome. A he's bit. he's just a little bit handsome, and he you know I, we we did a Zoom the other day, and I was like, "What are you lifting in quarantine?" Like he's like, "Sun's out, guns out." I'm like, oh, oh. Um, rude. Rude. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing yeah. nothing. People keep being like, what are you doing for exercise? And I'm like, I cry so much. I burn so many calories. <laughs> <laughs> Sick of this. Um, but, but yeah, um, so Nick, Nick is Nick is funny. But he's also we were talking earlier, he's he's one of those guys who is so he's just he's he, from a human observation point of view he is so on it to like oh this is this this is this oh that person must be feeling that he's very he's very empathetic it's um yeah he's he's he i was telling you on the phone last night um nick is somebody who like when he asks you a question at a, at a he's having a conversation like he really cares yeah. he's not like just trying to like he's never got his eye on the door to see if somebody cooler is about to walk in he's like in the conversation to be in the yeah. conversation and i you know sometimes hollywood parties and shit it's people always have an eye on the door to see if someone cooler is about to walk in and yeah. it's nice just to, to meet somebody who's not like that at all the thing about nick is that he knows he's the coolest person in the room so he doesn't have to worry about anybody else coming in. yeah i know that's true that must be nice must yeah. be nice tough tough life nick um no we we, we definitely we, we love us some nick yeah and it's it's been fun i think it's been cool playing with the character of Kyle too, because Trevino is also some, somebody who's so special and just like, ooh, somebody has a Roswell tattoo. I bet that's an OG Roswell tattoo. I feel like we haven't been on the air. Roswell, New Mexico has not been on the air long enough to earn a tattoo. <laughs> um, yeah, I, it, it might, I have, I have to look. Yeah, there is- We talked about it. We, um, when we were doing the pilot, mansion. Janine was like, we were all having so much fun and we were just like so in love with each other and just like, this is it, this is our family. And Janine was like, we should just get, we should all just get alien tattoos. And I was like, well, pump the brakes. Hold yeah. on, this could go horribly wrong. <laughs> we didn't even know if we were picked up yet. Like I was like, this could be a terrible experience. We don't know. Right. Season right. six, if we still like each other, we'll all go get tattoos. <laughs> right, right. Lord of the Rings, they were there for, I think three or four years when they got yeah. their tattoos. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah I, when, when we were shooting the original, there was a few people who would come up and and uh, want to show their tattoos. That's you cool. Like tattoos? handprints or? Mm -hmm. Wow. Y yep, yep, handprints. Um, Mark of the Bear is what they called it. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's so cool. But um, I mean, it was like, you know, it's uh, it's that it takes a lot for something that means that much to you that you put that on your body, and, you know, as a, as a, you know, to represent, to reflect what, you know, what it is that yeah. you're feeling. So. Yeah. I mean, my tattoos are just like, whatever, I picked it up the wall, but. Um, sure, I guess some people get meaningful things. <laughs> You'll be surprised, though. I think that, you know, I mean, depending. I know Nathan has that tattoo, you know, you know on his back. Yeah. Max one. Yeah. Know. yeah. Now Michael has it, too. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Just, just marking him up. Nathan, we, we have to cover some of his tattoos. So it's really funny because, like, whenever he has to wear, he has to be shirtless. Not only does he have to sit through tattoo coverage, of the ones that I didn't feel like were like totally in character for Max, but he also then has to get one added on. Um, I'm his favorite person for all of that, trust me. <laughs> he's like, are you sure Max wouldn't have this tattoo? And I'm like, I'm sure Max wouldn't have this tattoo. And he's like, I think Max would have this tattoo. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I think you want an extra hour of sleep in the morning. And if you're an actor, maybe don't get tattoos. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we let him keep some of them, we let him keep some of them. Yeah. When is Isabel going to get the tattoo? I don't know. Oh my gosh. I love that it's called Mark of the Bear. Mark of the Bear, yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, it's funny about that too, because someone just asked, um, Chris, Christy Akua, she asked if I have any tattoos, and I do. I have a tattoo. Um, when I, I, um, All my brothers have tattoos, and I thought I was going to go my whole life without getting one. And then I went to Japan. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm getting a tattoo here. And so I, I like, I spent like the three months that I was there actually like designing and doing research to figure out what I wanted. And, um, and what it is, it's, uh, it's three different kanji stories on my back, but there's five, oh. five um, um, lines. So it's like, cause you know, all, all these other, like, you know, the other, the big cats have just four claws, you know, the dew claws up here. And so the bear has actually like, the, their scratch mark is five. So I did that in my back. That's awesome. 
So I guess I, I have this. my own I'm market like, here. I'm a little bit of an addict. I, I keep getting, like, it looks like I've been doodled on all over my body, basically. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I'm, but I'm not an actor, so it doesn't mean, you know, I don't have to cover it up in the morning, which is good. <laughs> That's literally the only thing that has stopped me because I, I like, you know, every time I go and like have an experience, I'm like, oh, I should probably get a tattoo nuts. That's another 30 minutes or 40 minutes or an hour in the, in the tattoo in the um, makeup chair. So, yeah, yeah, it is. And it's, you know, that time you could be sleeping. Mm -hmm. People, it's, it's, prefer it, it's precious. Um, yeah, I'm looking yeah. for, would Jason and Sherry ever work together on screen in a movie? I mean, you hate each other so much. Can't, you and can't Sherry. stand it. Can't stand it. It will <laughs> never happen. Um, you know, it's funny about that because like Shiri and I, sh we, our kids play together, you know, we, mm -hmm. you know, we, they, um, we've, we've been hanging out for, for a bit now and we're always asked like, what, what would you guys want to work on? And it just feels like it has to be something really good. Yeah. You know, and different. That. I don't and, yeah, like different. different. Yeah. I'm trying to see. But yeah, absolutely. How long have you guys met? We met, Jason and I met at Julie's Plex birthday party uh, two, two years, years ago. Like, Julie's birthday's coming up in a couple weeks. So, mm -hmm. like, about two years ago is our anniversary, Jason. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, that was when we had shot the pilot, but we hadn't, e oh, no, we had, we'd got, just gotten picked up. Um, and we didn't, like, I was I was very nervous. I was very excited to meet you, but I was, like, not sure if you were going to be, like, what, what are you fucking with my show for? Um, but you were so nice. And it was funny because at that birthday party, the thing that I remember the most about it is it was like the Roswell kids who are all kind of like, like they're all my age. Everybody's like, you know, 30 ish, 30 something ish yes. and has been working for a long time. And then it was us hanging out with all the Vampire Diaries cast members. And then we were hanging out in literal bleachers because the, the party was prom themed, was prom like theme, Sweet yep. 16 themed. Yep, yep. And so there were literal bleachers and we're all hanging out at the bleachers and everybody's like smoking and talking about like, how jaded we are and, and you know, how, how, you know, Hollywood bullshit. And then we look over on the dance floor and all the kids from Legacies mm -hmm. are like partying, having the best time. And we were like, oh my God, we're the seniors and they're the freshmen. I have no idea what's coming for that. <laughs> um, and I just, that's, we have all these Polaroids from that night. Um, and then I think, I didn't see you for a while, but at Julie's birthday party, her next birthday party next was when I was like, so would you maybe want to come and do my TV show? <laughs> And then yeah, that was now. that was awesome. <laughs> I think we we I I think we all kind of went home at around like like five or something like that in the yeah. morning. It was it was a pretty. pretty I remember night. it was because it was Julie's birthday combined with Candace's birthday combined. Right. With, like, a bunch, it was like a big thing, and there was a zillion cakes. And I just remember we were leaving at like four in the morning, and I was just like taking one piece of each cake and putting it in a on a piece of paper like on a paper plate with foil. Right. Right. And I woke up in the morning and. I went into my I went to my fridge to get water, and I looked at and I just saw this plate of covered in different kinds of cake, and I was like, "That's what I did in front of OG <laughs> Matt Evans was just be like, hold on, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna collect some things. Just hold on. There, there was awesome. no there was like a wine shortage in Los Angeles after that night. <laughs> yeah, oh my god, oh my god. I was actually I I think at that point I was drinking tequila. Yeah, maybe I don't know. I was drinking whatever I saw. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> that's what see, that's what this time of year is for, though. It's not for being locked in a house working. This time, this is the time of year when I usually get to be like, okay, I'm relaxing. I'm spending time with my friends. I'm like being a human being again. Right. Uh, having a drink or two, because I'm like during the year when we're when we're in production, with the exception of a few tiny's nights, I'm like pretty hardcore. I go to bed early. Work my you ass are, up. you are pretty, you, you, you go to bed, or you go to bed late and you, and you get up early is what you normally yeah. do. Yeah, people are always like, let's go get a drink after work. And I'm like, oh, that's funny. I have to go home and write a whole script tonight. I'll see you at 7.30 a.m. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what, me and, me and Lily were just talking about that. You, you work your ass off and, and you, you know, you've gotten where you've gotten, not just because you're extraordinarily talented, but because you work really hard. And there's nothing but respect for that. Thank you. I appreciate that. But yeah. again. I work really hard because usually during the months of April and May, I'm like passed out on a field at Coachella. So, <laughs> which which you threatened to drag me to this year, and I was like, oh, uh, I will do it someday. I, yeah. I think this year, because of all this garbage, just shouldn't count toward getting a year older. Like this year does not count toward me getting too old for Coachella. 
just that's a great that. idea in fact <laughs> it's like the, yeah like the, this this coronavirus it's like the corona year it just doesn't mean it's yeah, like a, it like a leap year like, or some kind. no no no, no. I, I need a i need a refund on this year and i would like right. to uh you know to to a redo for sure because screw this it's not fun it's not fun at all i'm i'm, I'm game um i i actually you know i I'm sure that you and the rest of the cast have been asked all these questions, like so many questions. But one of the things that I thought was like not not even regarding like Roswell, New Mexico, was what is the first thing you're going to do when you're done with this quarantine? Um, my my like sentimental answer is that I'm going to go see my mom. I really miss my mom. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we work so hard all season, and I don't get to see my family that much. Um, and this is usually the time of year when I do get to spend, you know, a week in, I go to New York every year for Upfronts for a week. Yeah, yeah. My mom lives in New York and I, so, so I usually see her um, and spend like real quality time with her in springtime in New York. And so mm -hmm. I really am missing my mom right now. That's a sentimental answer. The less sentimental answer is that I'm gonna get a piercing. <laughs> 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 because I, I, like there's one that I want and I was gonna get it and then I couldn't and I'm like, it's weird. I'm like, I really want this thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I probably uh, would have gotten my second tattoo. I don't know when I'm going to feel safe about doing that again, but as soon as I do, right, that's happening. Yes, everybody's like, do I hear your dog? Yeah, my dog is sitting outside of my bedroom door right now whining. Um, he's, he's, oh, I'll show you. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you, Pacey. I'm just trying to avoid everybody seeing the mess in my room, but, you know. Hey, bud. You want to say hi? Oh, I, okay, come here. I got you. This is Pacey. Hey, buddy. He's named I after remember. after Pacey from Dawson's Creek. Mm -hmm. Um, but he has a very bad attitude. I think he bit you. Didn't he bite you when you were over? <laughs> I, I I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. Little nip, little nip. Yeah, he's little very nip. protective. No, I, I just, I just remember like... being in your house, and like Aisha was like, he bit Jason, and like he wanted to go get some like stuff to like clean off my wound, and I was like, I was just I just went down to. Him. I don't think he, like, so he doesn't have top teeth. So what he actually can do is scratch you. He can't really bite yeah. you because he doesn't, he's, he, he had like a tumor on his mouth. He had to take out all of his top teeth. But um, yeah, he's an asshole. People I ask think me it was mostly, is, and I'm like, I think it was mostly demon and a squirrel. I don't know, but I love him very, very much. <laughs> Um, I was I was going with it was either, it was either type, a love. He's, like, he's an asshole, but I love him. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that it was either it was either a love bite or he was just being a little protective of you. He's, yeah, like, he's very he's protective, just... and and for some reason he's like, he's he's pretty chill during the day, but when people come over at night, he's like, no, this is bedtime. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Go home. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's smart. He's a, he's a smart dog. I'm a, I have a um, couple of questions for you because I because like I said, yeah, I thought yeah. you guys might have so many like questions and been answered for, for the fans um but um you, you i know you know you know who james lipton is and bernard mm -hmm. pivot and all that oh god has anybody ever asked you those questions no okay so one of the questions is and i won't go through all of them right now but no you can't i mean whatever you want what what is your favorite word my favorite word is wanderlust great word it's a good one it's exactly what it what it says it is <laughs> mm-hmm Okay, what is what is your what is your least favorite word? Honey. Oh, I did a I There's gotta be a story behind that. Yeah, I mean I I worked with a guy who was constantly calling me honey and it's like it, literally like anytime I hear the word now I get like this like in in this like condescending like okay sweetheart you're twelve years old, you don't know what you're talking about kind of way. Right. And, uh, right. <sighs> don't like it. You get a little bit, like, a, a little bit of, um, you know, Hollywood, there was a really long time when Hollywood was run by old white dudes. And so sometimes I come in and I'm like enthusiastic and silly and I'm, I'm, I take the work very seriously, but I don't take myself very seriously. And so sometimes people talk down to me and that's the word, that's the one that will make me be like, excuse me, I'm your boss, sit down. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, what's the other one I wanna ask you? There, so I'll give you a couple more here before we, I have to try to find out how to save this thing a little bit here. Um, 
what is the what is the sound or noise that you love? Rain. It's mm -hmm. a great one. What is the sound or noise that you don't like? Um, the noise that my phone makes when I have a voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's hilarious. Michael Trevino is the worst. Michael Trevino will leave me a two and a half minute voicemail and I'm like, I hope you're bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, da, 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 da. I already know the answer to this one, and, but, but, but I'll ask it anyways, because I'm not sure if anybody has asked you this, maybe not. Um, the profession that you would like to attempt if you weren't a writer for TV or movies. Um, if I wasn't a TV writer, I, I think my, my easy answer is I would write something else because I really do love writing. Um, I always say that if, if money wasn't an object, I would like go live in a cabin and write books and write poems. I, I, I studied poetry as, uh, in college and like really had this idea that like I could just grow up and be a poet. And then I like remembered that like rent is a thing. <laughs> uh, but there is the starving artist. Yeah, but I have been able to translate some of that into into Roswell and into what I do. So, um, you know, we have in the finale, I wrote a song and the song has lines in it from a poem that I wrote while we were working on the pilot. So I get to do a little bit. But if I if I was going to do something um, that that, you know, like really outside of what I do now, if I could, if writer was off the table, I think I would make a really good lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm like I think I, I usually win an argument. It's it's hard to it's 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 hard to bullshit me. So. That's awesome. That's awesome. I I agree with that. And um, I, I was gonna say like you know, you've you've read me and shared you've shared your poetry with me. I think that it's so beautiful. It's so I'm, embarrassing that I'm like, listen, listen, Jason. I know you have things to do, but um, can I just read you my poems? This is like late night after Tiny's tiny karaoke so bar. <laughs> It's what one does after karaoke. Okay. Let me read you what I thought about my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> it was beautiful. And I'm, I hope that someday you actually like put a book of poetry out there. I hope so too. I, um, I've had a couple opportunities. It's just a little bit hard. Uh, I am having a hard time putting together something that um, feels good, but isn't too personal. Um, I'm okay with sharing my personal business. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to share other people's personal business, like right, right. friends and ex-boyfriends and family members and stuff. So like, right, right. and and I write in detail. Like I, I don't want to be Taylor Swift and have people being like, "Who's this one about?" So I'm trying to, um, right, right. I'm trying to figure out how to do that without exposing my entire world to the internet. But you know, I'm working on it. Yeah, I think you should I'm gonna make Rosa a Spotify playlist. I will make Rosa a Spotify playlist. I have a 90s playlist, but that's basically my Rosa playlist. Mm -hmm. um, questions. Hi, Dougals. You're so nice. Thank you for buying a shirt. Um, some of the people I just like, I, that pop up on these, it's like I've seen them in my comments forever. Um, and it feels like old friends. Um, I'm trying to think of what questions I want to ask you. Your lack of a beard just threw me off, honestly. I had so many beard questions. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing what, what questions you can ask about facial hair. <laughs> so many, so many. Um, I, did, I did do that thing, though, with Atticus, where I, I first took off, and I had like, a handlebar at first, oh, yeah. and then he was like, laughing at me and then I and then I just did like the little pencil stash in the, in the lamb shops my He's friend like, oh. showed me like this this basically was like a diagram of all the different facial hair that is safe to have while wearing a mask because some of it that like it breaks the seal and yeah. one of the things that was safe to have during the mask was the walrus mustache yeah. and I was like that's the move but that's what you gotta do <laughs> I may have a picture Anytime to share with you later. Anytime you have a walrus mustache, it's now. <laughs> <laughs> Save yourself the embarrassment of anybody actually seeing it, but you know. Yeah, yeah. Have, Just yeah. whoever yeah. whoever is unlucky enough to be quarantined with you while you have your walrus mustache, <laughs> but like, have your moment. Have your moment. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Oh man, will we? What's up, Rose's power? Oh, man, I don't want to tell too many secrets. Everybody's awesome. I could rewrite episodes of the original show, what would they be? The original show, the one that always sticks out to me is the heat wave episode. I feel like 
I like when I watched yeah. it when I was a kid. I just thought it was the sexiest thing that I'd ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> and that was that was the Maxim Liz first kiss. Yeah, yeah. It was a very very end of the episode they did that. Yeah, I know. Like everybody once, got together. Once the heat wave was kind of passed, it was like then they. That's how you knew it was real love. The heat right. wave had passed. And right. They still wanted to make out. They still wanted to be <laughs> yeah, make out in the eraser closet. Eraser room. We, we we dropped a few eraser room mentions in, in this season. We um I think we have to cut the line, but uh Maria and Alex were in a band together when they were in high school and they were called the Eraser Room Riot. Um and you cut it out? I think we had to cut the line oh. for time. We we lose so much so many jokes for time, it's very annoying. Yeah. Um, but you do you do get a lot of good things in there. I know that you were you know I try. I I um I'm not the comedy person. Some of the jokes are mine. Most of them are Eva's, uh, um, because she's our she's she Eva and Deirdre are our writers. Who when I'm like, oh man, I'm not in a funny mood because I've been up all night for three nights trying to write this thing. I'll be like, can right. you get some jokes in here, please? Can you make Isabel funny? And also Lily. Lily has Lily has gotten more lines into the show than any other actor by far. She'll mm -hmm. come to me and be like, all right, this joke is fine, but what if I said this instead? And I'm like. Yeah, that's way better. <laughs> See, get in that writing room. Did you have to cut any whole scenes for time this season? We did. And um, a lot of them are, we cut two scenes from 203. We cut nothing, no full scenes from tonight's episode. We cut a scene from next week's episode that was kind of a bummer because I, I shared a, a photo of that scene and people got excited and now it's not in there. But um, I'm trying to figure out a way to get them to, to release the deleted scenes for you guys because they don't really do them on DVDs anymore, which is weird to me. Like, there's no special features on our DVDs. So I'm kind of like, well, could I just post it if it's not going to go anywhere? Technically, it doesn't belong to me. It's Warner Brothers. But I want everybody to see everything because I'm really proud of all the work. And when something gets cut, it bums me out. But I miss, I miss DVDs with, like, director's commentary and, like, all the, the right. deleted scenes and, like, bloopers we, we cut together our own blooper reel this year and just i just tweeted it i think i got in a little yeah. cover for it but oops, whoopsies <laughs> i think i might be in a couple of those this year i'm not sure there's a couple yeah of you will <laughs> 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 Perfect. oh man i actually someone just sent the whole thing about being on instagram is they they send you these things Mm -hmm. like the, the uh, you know posts with you uh, attached to it and they sent out a version of the blooper reel and i reposted it and it was this this one time when me and brendan were out and it was you know i had the, this phone up to my head and brendan was supposed to kind of grab me and pull me back so i wasn't seen and he pulled me right back into a lamp and i just crowned myself <laughs> and just i like I, I thought i was gonna drop but um but like seeing stuff like that is is uh it it's it's fun to relive, you know, but it's also like when I see other people's blooper reels, I'm like, that makes me laugh. We had this moment last, last or season, season one at the very end, where Liz is in Max's house, she can't find him, she thinks he's dead, there's this pool of blood on the floor, and then she looks out to the field and she sees him far away, and she goes running for him, and the first couple times we shot it, Janine kind of like went around the blood, and I was like, no, it wasn't me, I think it was Eva, Eva was like, do you think she'd really even be thinking about the blood? Like, it feels like, oh, he's alive. Just run right for him and like run over the dried blood. And we were like, yeah. And Janine was like, you're right. Which is, I'll just run over the blood. And as soon as she's, it's not dry. It's completely slick and wet. And we're complete, she just, bam, hits yeah. the ground. And thank God she was okay. And she like yeah. laughed it off. But it was literally like, we felt so bad. So we were like, yeah, she's just run through it. We didn't ask anybody. We forgot yeah. to be like, hey, is it dry? <laughs> like, yeah. Run through that oil slick. I, I actually saw that. Yeah. And it's like wardrobe uh, and medic, please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the funny thing is, is like Janine is the most agile person. I'll always be like, like, oh shit, you know, you can't run in those heels. And she's like, watch me. Yeah. Yeah. And Nathan is the person who always falls down. Like, I, every time we have to have him run in a scene, I'm like, oh god, here we go. Is he gonna make it? And he usually doesn't. <laughs> but it was like this one time where we're like, actually, just just run. And she just eats it. it felt so bad. <laughs> But it makes for a good blooper reel. People falling down is a lot better than people fucking up their lines for a blooper reel. So much, <laughs> so take, much more Take fun. one for the team. Right, a little shot in Freud. Yeah, yeah. All right, I, I, I kind of have to go because I have to jump back into the writer's room. I All love right, so talking to you. I keep looking at your face. <laughs> that, that gets me.
right back at you. When you when you when this is all over, you and me are gonna go grab a nice drink and I cannot wait for this to all be over and for us to be like, remember when we can only talk on Instagram live? <laughs> <laughs> all right, my sweet friend. Thank you so much for doing this. All right, love you. When you right, when you end this thing, when you hit the X, make sure that you click save. A little thing will come up. I hit the X, which I see it. I got it. Like when you X out of it eventually. Because mm -hmm. I assume you aren't going to be live on Instagram for the rest of the li your life. I think I Nick Wexler it. might be coming in here soon. Yes. Oh, man. I'm gonna, so, so make sure to save that so I can watch okay. it. All right. Okay. Send, send okay. him my love. He's I will. my favorite of all of you. Just kidding. Oh. <laughs> just, all right. Just love kidding. You. Bye. Okay. That is that. Let's see if Nick is going to come in here. We'll see what happens. I, I need to try to save this. And golly, do I help? Um, and Nick, actually, yeah, and two forty-five sounds great. Oh, here, there, I see him. I'm going to activate you, Nick Wexler, and then we will hopefully be able to. Uh, Bear with me, folks. I'm just trying to make sure I got Nick because I'm actually taking over this thing. I have none of my other people in here. So I just want to say thank you guys for being patient. And also uh, thank you for everyone who joined in. That was really, really awesome. I can do this. I know I can. I know I can do this. Give me space to do this. I'm official Nick Wester. That's your jam. All right. This is so awesome that I'm able to just spend so much time doing this. Because I normally have you think that this would actually da, 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 da. so let me do this folks I'm gonna have to take somebody else here on the scene no, I'm just kidding I'll, I'll get you I'll get you here real quick let's do this ba, 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 ba. hold on Nick if Nick can request, this would be awesome, but I'm not seeing him. I will be doing more questions when I get a chance. That was amazing with... Uh, Such a long thing, Nick Wexler. What is this? Nick Wexler, I am officially Nick Wexler. You had to do all that. This is just you mocking. It's not finding you at all. Yeah, all, right. all right, I'm going to try to, let me just save this and I'll get Nick up.